with the attractive style Z790A silver motherboard from Biostar offers you all the bells and whistles of the latest Z790 chipset but at an affordable price. Let's say that this is a good balance of features versus the price which is at the time of the review around $280 but what are you getting for your money? Looking for affordable windows or office keys? Look no further, I got you covered. Head over to scdkey.com, pick your windows edition, use my discount code LE25 to get a 25% on any windows or office products. Once you complete your order, after a few seconds you will receive your code. In windows, go to settings, there should be an activate windows prompt at the bottom, click that, enter your code and wait for windows to finish activation. To check the activation status, use the command prompt with a command slmgr .vbs .xpr and you should receive a notification that the machine is permanently activated. Once again, use code LE25 at scdkey.com. The Z790A Silver is in addition to Biostar's racing line of motherboards. It features the same sturdy design and aesthetics as its predecessors, including the familiar racing stripes on its PCB and also silver-colored heatsinks present on the VRMs, chipset and NVMe shield. It supports Intel's 12th and 13th gen CPUs with the current LJ1700 slot quad-channel DDR5 memory with speeds up to 7200 megatransfers per second. It features a 20-phase VRM design with 90 amps power delivery which is pretty much sufficient for the latest 3900K CPU, even overclocked. Of course, it has ESD protection, overvoltage and overcurrent protection built-in. Right below the CPU socket there is a first NVMe slot which is PCIe Gen 4 capable and it is in the direct connection with the CPU. It also features a Wi-Fi slot as well with antenna wires left here. This is also puzzling why this board does not come with the integrated Wi-Fi card out of the box. I mean this is some 20 to 25 bucks for a Wi-Fi 6 card to get it separately but this could have been easily included and would not raise the price that much. At least there is an option and up to the user to decide which card they want. So take this into consideration when you look at this board, as it could be easily mistaken that it has Wi-Fi when you look at the back. Moving further down, Gen 5 PCIe X16 slot for the latest GPUs which is also reinforced, right below it there is another Gen 4 NVMe slot without a shield, below it there is a PCIe X1 slot, another PCIe X16 slot but this one is Gen 4, below that one yet another M.2 slot without shield again and another PCIe X1 slot. Both of these M.2 slots are Gen 4 and these two are controlled via the chipset. Alright, let's check out the ports around the board. Top side, EPS power connectors, one 8-pin and one 4-pin and two PWM fan headers. It's the CPU and CPU optional one. On the right side, from the top to bottom, 12 volt RGB connector followed by two ARGB 5 volt connectors, 24 pin power connector, front USB 3.0 header, front USB C connector, followed by two PWM fan headers and six SATA 3 ports. Bottom of the board from the right to the left includes CMOS clear jumper, the TPM connector, speaker and front panel connector, two USB 2.0 ports, COM port header and the Thunderbolt headers as well, followed by another two PWM fan headers and front audio header. The rear IO shield is not on the board itself, again puzzles me considering that this is a flagship tier board so you get the IO shield separately which is so easy to forget when building a PC, so again pay attention to this. Alright, backside, top to bottom, BIOS flashback button which is a nice thing, one of the USB ports is also designated for that function. There are two antenna ports here working only if you install the Wi-Fi card. Display port, it's the version 1.2 and HDMI 2.1 port for the integrated GPU. We have 5 USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, 1 USB C 3.2 Gen 2 port, 2 USB 2.0 ports, LAN port and audio jacks. For the LAN solution, Biostar opted for the Realtek 2.5 gigabit controller. The exact model is RTL8125B and this is for a reason. For some time, Z690 and Z790 boards were coming with Intel 225V controller, which is known to cause issues like dropping connection and all sorts of problems so using a real tech controller here is actually a good thing. 
The audio codec is entrusted to the proven ALC1220. This is not the latest codec, so you understand the cuts Biostar went through to achieve the balance in features and price. Nonetheless, this sound card is pretty capable, offering 7.1 channel output and high definition audio. It also has a separate amplifier for the front audio, so it can drive the demanding headphones without any issues. The BIOS is packed with features, no seriously, it's packed with all tiny adjustments you can do to this board. Of course, the XMP profiles are supported for the memory, I used 5600 MHz kit here working properly as it should, not a single issue. Expect a BIOS update which will add support for the upcoming 24, 48, 96 and 192GB kits, something that was not possible previously with DDR4 memory. Oh by the way, this board supports speeds up to 7200 MHz. Cool features also present in the BIOS are the control of the fans with custom fan curves for each fan header with the predefined presets or you can individually set each curve as you wish. Of course PWM and DC modes are also supported so you can connect 3 pin fans and still properly control their speed as well. RGB can be also controlled directly in BIOS so you can totally eliminate the need to use any additional software for it. This will change with the upcoming Windows 11 update, so RGB will be integrated into the OS itself, finally. But it does have its own software called the Silver Lightning utility, which you can use to further customize RGB zones directly from the OS. You can also change and adjust fan headers in Windows directly. It's hard to properly test a motherboard and give you something that you can, I don't know, feel. Let's say that this is more an overview than a review of a board. It's worth noting that everything works as it should once the PC is assembled. The VRMs can hold a beefy CPU. I tried 12900K here as well as the lower tier i3 12100F CPU just so I can have a better understanding how it behaves. CPU never throttled, nor something was stuttering, not even while gaming or doing productivity tasks, not even under stress testing with ADA64. So all in all, it's a pretty much stable motherboard. The NVMe performance is up to supported Gen 4 specs, even with all three slots populated. It's worth noting that if you populate the bottom M.2 slot, the PCI X16 slot will be disabled, I mean the Gen 4, the second one. Totally understandable and gives you the ability to still use all six SATA ports in that case. Transfer speeds were up to the max capabilities of the installed drives, no stutters, no hangs. So I would say that once things are up and running, you can rest assured that it's a smooth sail from there. In summary, the Z690A Silver reigns as the top performing gaming motherboard by Biostar. It will be great for passionate gamers who demand nothing but the best. It can use the full potential of the latest CPUs, graphic cards and RAMs without breaking your wallet in half. Thanks for watching guys, you know the drill, sub to the channel, it's highly appreciated and I'll see you in the next one.